<laughs> We're live. It always does that. <sighs> hey everyone, we're back. We're back again to have another conversation about race and consciousness, I guess, essentially. Relationships, race, consciousness. Love. 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 <laughs> we already started talking about the topic. It started with us choosing this title. He loves me for my blackness. What does that even mean? Oh, that's what we're going to unpack here today. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about mm. a an experience that we had yesterday in reading a poem that was celebrating the qualities of a black woman and her beauty. And for me, it was really... Oh my gosh, it was really profound because it started a process of me loving the things that are innately part of a, being a black woman. Things that I have wronged and, and shamed and, and thought were not valuable are the very things that he loves most about me. Um, so it was a process of reclaiming those qualities as beautiful, as worthy, as valuable, and recognizing them as such so that I could start to receive the love that was coming towards me that before I couldn't recognize as love you know mm -hmm. I'd be like oh you know yeah you just you just like my booty because yeah that's a that's a black thing that like people exploit so I'm just like if you love my booty like you're bad you know so I was really like pushing away love and we're going to get more of those specifics of, of, of that experience, but I kind of want to pass it over to Michael because his experience of the title and all of this <laughs> that I just said is, is a little different. Yeah. Well, this all comes from the, the poem that I found about black women and their beauty and, and goddessness. Um, I came with all these photos of beautiful black women of all sh different shapes and sizes and I and I wanted to share that with Tamina because it felt so true for me. Um, all of the pieces that are beautiful and I wanted to share that love with her. Um, so if you're curious about that post, go check it out. On, I think it's on your page. I tagged her. <laughs> I do recommend you, you take a look. Um, for me, it felt powerful. It felt beautiful, and I felt attracted to everything about it, the words, the photos, and and I wanted to share it. I wanted to share my love that way. And I was also, like, scared to share it. Like, I didn't. I was averse to sharing it. For some of the same themes that you just brought up, actually. Um, and um, I actually want to speak to that that title, that, that comment that we wrote here. He loves me for my blackness. Well, I, I was thinking about it, and it came, it came through to me that, like, I definitely don't love you in spite of your blackness. That's not true. And I... And... Part of me wants to also push away the idea that I love you for your blackness, because that I don't know if that feels true for me either. But I definitely love your blackness, mm. and that's such an integral part of you that you know it's it's inseparable from who you are, because it shapes you, and it is your shape, and it has shaped who you are, and all the ways of complexity that could be imagined. And uh, yes, I love it. I love it through and through in all, in all, in all the ways it takes form beyond even the color. <laughs> yeah, the texture, the shapes, the, the earth, the fire, the water, you know, all of the pieces of the culture, you love your dance, you know, the way you express it. You know. 
everything about who you are is what I love. What I was afraid of, you know, I, I wasn't sure what I was afraid of when I was posting this, this poem and photos, but there's something about like me sharing this as a white person, a white man in, in particular, that just felt like scary or threatening, like, like I might judge this as, I didn't want it to be like, you know, this oppressive fetishization of blackness, like, oh yeah, I love like these, these juicy parts of blackness, but it's lesser than, and it's good just for like my primal, primal urges, but like when I'm a higher, in my higher, higher self in higher society, it's not welcome. It's not actually valuable mm. for me there. And that's what I was like, I think what I was grappling with, like, Am I share? Yeah. From what place am I sharing this? I know that from the place I'm sharing this is true, like true heartfelt, but there is that, I think that history and that ingrained, I don't know, patterns of, of society that says like a white person, white man loving your blackness is, is oppressive. It's like, it's, it's gonna, um, a predator sort of quality to it that I really wanted to avoid. I wanted to separate from. Mm. Me too. Me too, quite frankly, like I wanted, I felt that separation too in any love being expressed for any of the parts that make me innately beautiful, like, but there are qualities that are inherent to black women. If that's celebrated, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could trust it. You know, like, oh, he's celebrating for something that's innately black woman, a quality for black woman. So therefore it's not to be trusted. Therefore it's, you know, just a fetish. So reject any form of appreciation or love coming my way if it's celebrating my blackness and that's where the pattern becomes mm -hmm. destructive because then I'm not allowing myself to be celebrated and, and I'm not celebrating myself you know it's like this perpetuous pattern of like not celebrating my beauty and the things that like my my qualities that are wonderful I couldn't allow myself to see that or to receive mm. that love at all. Yeah, that's hard to be on the other side of as well. Like, I want you to receive it because it can almost feel like rejection if it's not received. Mm. And that could be hard on my ego. I suppose. But also my heart just wants to touch yours. After yesterday reading that post, I felt, I feel like my heart was touched for the first time in celebrating, mm -hmm. celebrating my black beauty and what I think was different, what was different? Because I think growing up, I've been taught like, you know, we don't see color or like, you know, love is blind, like all of these things that kind of take away from the fact that like, yes and no, like, like, yes and no, because there are some qualities about different cultures and people and makeups and experiences that nurture different qualities within themselves that thrive. Like for instance, like my culture, the way I grew up and the way the woman I am, I'm very soulful, I'm very expressive. And, you know, being able to celebrate those parts of myself, of my blackness, like owning that, like, oh yeah, black women are very soulful. You know, black women are very powerful. Our bodies, our booties, like 
all of the things like inside and out that like are ingrained in our DNA, like being able to celebrate that as like that does exist, you know, and every culture has their version of that, but to not shy away from that, like even now saying it now, I'm like, ooh, am I being diplomatic? Am I being oppressive? Like this like navigation of like fairness that I see wanting to like happen that I'm like, no, no, as a black woman, I am soulful. And that is like innate in my DNA. And that is beautiful. And like owning that and like being like, yes, that can be celebrated. When I can celebrate myself in that way, I can receive the celebration from my partner and like the love from my partner who's also trying to celebrate and, and say that those qualities are beautiful. I'm able to let it in. I'm able to let him in, you know, and to, uh, I feel like that is like what, that is what, I don't want to say that's not, that's what raises me up. No, it's like this feeling of like, that is how I can feel my own value, my own worthiness is by being able to name and like who I am and where that comes from and know that that, that doesn't, hmm, where are the words? It's like me naming those things doesn't stomp on anyone else, doesn't wrong anyone else. But it's just claiming my own space of being worthy as well. Mm -hmm. I think that um, my role and the role of white people to to heal that in conjunction with your work is to, you know, in turn celebrate it, find what it is that we celebrate about it and heal the shame that we feel of, you know, the history of how it has been taken by force without reciprocity. Feel the shame of how it's been used against you. And learn to be able to celebrate it without being afraid of it, without being afraid of our judgment of ourselves, of, of, of even the judging the celebration itself. Of my worthiness. Mm -hmm. Worthiness, your beauty, the, you know, the qualities of you. Yeah. Like when I can freely celebrate it and express it, Outwards and to others in the world. I think that's well, a that's freedom, but also that's that's important. It's important for the world to see that, and it's important for me to process and and release what comes up when I'm wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. The theme of like celebration is really coming up, like the theme of being able to celebrate parts of yourself and also being in the practice of looking at what comes up um, as you try to celebrate yourself, like what's blocking, what's blocking you from being able to celebrate yourself, your beauty, your worthiness. And I'm like, I'm, I'm actually asking whoever's watching this right now, you know, to like, look at, look at that, like, how are you unable to celebrate yourself? It might be the same blocks that prevent you from celebrating others as well. Because celebrating others is just as important as celebrating ourselves and they are intertwined. Hmm. They are so intertwined. And, um, it's pretty much one of the reasons why I'm starting Pussy Awareness Week tomorrow, actually Monday, is to learn to be in that space of celebrating women, to celebrate our, our sexuality, to celebrate our bodies, to celebrate our soul, our essence, like all parts of ourselves. 
uh, without shame, um, without, you know, the adopted, the adopted perspectives we've taken on of how we look at sexuality and how we look at, you know, our anatomy. And we are much more than just being a part, you know, being just anatomy. We're more than that. And um, when we think about like our pussies, there's so many stories that could come up of like, you know, how it's been referenced or how it's been looked at by our families or ourselves. And, you know, just like how we were talking about looking at what's blocking us from celebrating, and we're really going to be looking at what's blocking us from ourselves. What's blocking ourselves from ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited for Pussy Awareness Week also. Um, not necessarily because I'm going to be a part of it and in it and being more aware of pussy, which I probably will catch anyway. But uh, I want my woman, I want you, Tamina, to celebrate your pussy. The more that you can celebrate that, the more that you can receive my celebration of I want you to be able to open to its power and flow completely. Mm. I think then we will both be nourished by your relationship to it. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for you and your relationships. You know, the more connected you are to yourself, to your pussy, the more connected you will be to the world around you, to the relationships that you want to experience, the richness of the, your relationships. Like everything is a reflection to your relationship to yourself, you know. So that's what we're really going to be exploring this week. And... I just feel really excited about how it's coming together. We have many guest speakers coming in. We're going to be sharing and we're going to be discussing different topics, like everything from, oh my gosh, periods, orgasms, squirting, sexual fluidity, getting to know your anatomy, you know, using orgasms to manifest, you know, to heal you know, cultivating a healthy relationships to your periods. Like there's just so much that we can, we can learn by coming together and by normalizing these kinds of conversations, just like we're, you know, attempting to normalize our conversations about race and relationships. Like it's a time when we are, we have the opportunity to be free. We don't need to censor ourselves and shame ourselves anymore. We have the opportunity to bring these conversations or these aspects of ourselves that we've kept in the dark in the closet. Like now we're being invited to bring them out to the open and to, to talk about them, normalize them, and to heal the wounds behind them so that we can start to actually be free. We aren't free when we're holding parts of ourselves back in the closet. Like we aren't free when we're, you know, navigating around difficult conversations and trying to like go around everything instead of just like standing in it and speaking about it even when it's hard, even when it's challenging. Um, and uh, we can be free. And everything that's happening on our world right now is supporting us in cultivating and claiming that freedom. So let's take it. Let's do it. Like, let's, let's do the work. Let's come together. Let's have these conversations. Um, so if you do want to be part of Pussy Awareness Week, this is totally free. And it's happening inside the Feminine Truth Sisterhood Facebook group. And I'll put the link in the comments below so that uh, if you are a female identifying individual, um, the space is, is there for you to step into if you're ready to do so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel complete with 
with this video. Is there mm -hmm. anything you want to add? No, do it. Now, now we have the space for it. Now we have the space to dive in. Open up. Open up to love. Mm. That's what we're here for. Thank you for having this conversation with me. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us in this conversation. Much love. <laughs>